Welcome to Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff today. We are on location on a farm. Stay tuned with our special guest. Why United Way? Because 99 cents of every dollar donated to United Way of West Georgia stays right here to help your neighbors. Yes, 99 cents. United Way makes every penny count. You can count on United Way, and United Way of West Georgia is counting on you. Please give today. Welcome back to Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff. Today we got Eric Simpson here. We are on location at his farm. His, uh, I'll let him tell you about his farm a little bit. How about that? Yes. The farm is New Eden Ecosystem. It's a, it's a 19 acre sustainable with organic and, and biodynamic practices and principles located out here in the Gray Hill community, out here between LaGrange and West Point, Georgia. And this is my second year here. And out here at New Eden, we grow everything heirloom as far as vegetables, heritage breed animals. And of course, and we just try to take advantage of nature's bounty to produce this good, healthy, clean, and wholesome food. Oh yeah, I see we got a display of some of that healthy, wholesome foods. We got some stuff here and we got Cucumbers you grow out there, peppers you grow out there, nice red peppers and, and and stuff. You also got a green pepper out there, and you got squash you grow out there. Also some tomatoes I see. And here's something you don't see too often. Here's a um, cucumber, a lemon cucumber. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how you grow that. Tell me a little something well, about it. A lemon is, is a variety, it's just a different variety of cucumber. There's several um, hundred of varieties of cucumbers as mm -hmm. far as worldwide. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. this lemon cucumber, you grow it typically the same way you do any other cucumber. But of course, it, it just is shaped like a lemon and it's colored like a lemon. And it tastes similar to a, to a cucumber. It's got a bit of sweetness, bit of sweetness to it, but it is. Like your, a lemon flavor? It is, it is. Light texture. Yes, and it's your typical salad cucumber. And okay. it looks good. Okay. All right, we also got some beans here. I want you to tell our viewers about these beans. They have different colors and, and, and stuff. I know these are... Peas. Peas. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. Zipper peas. Right. I'm a, I'm a chef. I should know that. <laughs> yes, I have two varieties of peas here. Has We have the zipper cream peas and we have the pink eye purple hull peas. They're both in the category that's called cow peas. What many people think of is, you know, people think of black eyed peas. They're in the same family, in the same category. So you can get fresh black eyed peas, peas from you. Yes, you can. Almost year round. Pretty almost. Almost. Almost working okay. on it. But okay. peas, peas are not a year long crop. They will probably start to wind up around the middle to the end of November. Okay, okay. Well, that's great. And I hear some chickens in the background. Of course, goats, chickens, and you got all kinds of stuff around here. Yes. You got some dogs that you manage to farm with you? Yes. <laughs> uh, what kind of dogs are they? Those dogs are great Pyrenees. They are livestock guardian dogs. They are great with goats, calves, any animals that you need protection for predators. Well, um, that's good. That's, that, that, that's, that's pretty good. Since you got predators on here and you got chickens, as we can see one walking around in the background here, <laughs> and uh, they producing good, go good eggs here. Oh. These are nice. I'm going to cook a few of these bad boys. Uh, I may just make an omelet or just scramble some eggs with a little salt and pepper and, and, and get the taste of it and see the difference in, in the ones you get from the grocery store. Wonderful. Yep. Um, a few other things we got. I, I hear you got me an organic chicken, and so I'm going to debone that thing that 
Is that one of the things you raise on your farm too? Yes, pastured poultry. All of, all of the birds here pretty much eat grass. They eat greenery to get those good omega-3s that makes those eggs a lot more rich and nutritious. And the, and, and the chicken, the meat bird, is what we, that's jargon for birds that you eat, that, that you raise for meat. And of course, and then of course, got birds that you lay for eggs. Now, the chicken that that, that you're presented with here today is a it, it's, it's a jumbo Cornish cross, which is bred specifically for meat. For meat, right? And it is it is a pasture raised bird, meaning that its diet consists ninety percent of the green stuff. Okay, okay, whatever all the greenery that you find on the ground. That's pretty much it. And in addition with you some... You can't get no better than that. Yes, with some insects and other bugs and well, things like that. Things, those things work. Circle of life, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, Circle sir. Circle of life. Wow, wow. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started on trying to prepare a few things. As you all can see, I got a little oil. I got a little margarine and salt, pepper. I want to try to keep it simple. Um, this margarine is or organic. It's organic butter. Or organic product. Also the oil, that's an organic product too. So I'm um, sticking with the theme here, all things are organic. And a lot of people like to eat healthy nowadays. And a lot of restaurants in Atlanta in surrounding areas are, are organic friendly. Uh, where you can get those products brought to the store. A lot of chefs go to the farm and pick out their things themselves and, and bring it back to the restaurant and uh, serve it because you, you, you are now getting a lot of people who like to eat healthy, who likes to take care of their body, to be around. You know, I work at a retirement center full time and that generation that we got that I feed, I try to give them the freshest product possible because that's what they grew up on, stuff straight from the farm without all the pesticides, without all that. They got out there and harvested the ground and worked it. So those are some of the things that you are bringing back yes. to us. Yes. Getting back to it. Yes. Uh, and, and life was simpler. And you see how long uh, grandma and grandpa stick around <laughs> without all the ailments that some of us young people have today. Yes. They didn't have arthritis. We got arthritis at a young age. Right. And I'll also add that this food is grown not so much for yield, not so much for size, but for taste. And of course, if you ever have an opportunity to source food and eat food from a local farm that farms according to sustainable and natural and organic practices, the, the biggest takeaway that you will come away with is that the food tastes so much better. It does taste different. You know, that, that makes the work of a chef a lot easier. You don't have to season stuff so much. Mm -hmm. People get a chance to taste the natural flavor of a chicken or a natural flavor or a bean. Yes. Without all the additives covering it up. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And another thing to point out is that the fresher the food is from the farm, the higher the quality, it doesn't have to endure what we call food miles. No. It doesn't travel 5,000 miles from Chile to get to your plate here in Georgia. And therefore, the additives and things that you just mentioned aren't a part of this mix is straight from the field from farm to table that's the best part of it i'm gonna go ahead and get started on cooking preparing some of this stuff um of course i got hand sanitizer gloves and i got a couple plates here and i'm gonna pre start out with preparing that chicken and then once i get that chicken prepared um with a little salt pepper and that oil that we have here um and then i go from there prepare and taking all these things that you've given me and do a side vegetable for it so people Great. can see um, that lemon, cucumber, maybe a garnish, may slice it so people can see the inside of it. And, and you know, I'm gonna taste it, of course, you know me, I like to eat, <laughs> well, I'm gonna taste it. Gotta taste and it, yeah. that, that's the best part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this chicken of course, I get my hand sanitizer out. You know, we're on the outside, don't have no uh, sink. So, you know, you gotta be safe here. I don't want nobody to get no illness. That goes with anything, anything you do. Even if you're out on the grill, 
You need hand sanitizer to, to keep yourself safe. You know? Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this chicken here. And I'm not gonna use the whole chicken. I'm gonna take this bad boy over here. We always gotta wash our stuff. Take a little bit of this water. And you may notice I'm pouring the water down in a separate bowl. For a simple fact, I don't want to contaminate my water with the poultry. And coming right over here, of course I don't have any gloves on, but this is the product that's going to be cooked. Uh, it's not raw product that you just pick up and eat. Uh, so with that being said, dig right into it. Look at that. I hope our viewers can see that, how the color of this chicken. And, you know, you, you, it's not yellow. It's got good skin color to it um, and, and stuff. And I'm going to deep on a little bit of this. Wow. I'm going to use that white meat. Course. White meat seems to cook a lot better on a surface that I'm doing. Because it always helps to have a good sharp knife when you're dealing with stuff like this. Set that to the side. And dark meat. Wow, look at that. Look at that, that redness to the meat. You can't get any better than that. Of course, if you have additives and all that kind of stuff. This is the that's the thigh. This is the white meat breast. Those are the main parts I'm gonna use there. Of course, give me a little bit of oil. Season it with a little oil. And you may notice I'm seasoning the chicken itself. Salt and pepper before I sear it on the grill. And it's just your basic black pepper, a little bit of salt. You know, I could have prepared this before we aired, but I wanted the viewers to see, you know, all the texture that goes into it and stuff. And a lot of people say, you when it comes to searing chicken, the skin to go down first, and that makes the chicken firm. Because you watch it, once it cooks up, up, it'll cook up very well. Cut my griller down, and it's just a basic griller that, that you use at home. And I'm on the outside, searing that skin side down first. Take some more dark meat here. And you're probably saying, wow, he be boning the leg. Well, you know, all this product too, this meat from these bones. I'm also going to, not today, but later on, boil that. And this make the best stock and you can make a soup with or chicken casserole or, or whatever.
and while that's doing its thing I got a few beans here I got a few beans here I'm gonna use these I'm gonna cut these up separate but first I'm gonna wash them you see I'm, I'm washing them like that and then a couple of these peppers put them in there too get these guys all washed up I, ho I hope somebody can smell this because this, this wind is blowing and I wish I had some rice or a, a nice table to set at You see that? See how that began to turn golden? That too. Turn it up just a little bit. Now, I encourage people not to do what I do at home. when it comes to a pepper. That's a nice, just as good as the one you can get in a grocery store, if not better. It probably is better, to be honest with you. I encourage people not to do this at home. Always use a board, but you gotta have a sharp knife to do this with. Strip you up and strip some peppers. That chicken, man. Wow. Now I'm going to use some of this organic margarine, butter, um, and it's salted. And this is to season my vegetables with. So the vegetables will have a flavor. It's going to be spicy, of course. It's you may notice I put a red bell pepper in there. Now. Instead of me stripping the piece, the bean, that's to get that piece that people taste so much. This is going to be almost like a stir fry. Shuffle. And these purple beans, to add color to it. Of course, you notice that was tomato sauce here. Of course, you can't make too many things without tomato. Oops. Look at that color. 
that's unique. You can't get any better than that. And this, this is what Eric was talking about, that freshness. Can't get any fresher than that. I understand you got some goats too. that for a garnish later on. Now this would make them the best salsa, these type tomatoes. But again, like I said at home, do not do this at home. Do not ever cut your vegetables or whatever in your hand for the simple fact that you cut yourself. Now, that pepper got some heat to it. Now, I want to show you something. Look at that pea. I hope you can get a good shot of that. That pea come from that. And this is just going to be all natural flavor. All right. I'm going to set that to the side while I contend with my chicken some more. Look at that. And this is that leg. This is that side dark meat. A lot of people love dark meat. And this is that breast, that big breast. As you can see, look at that. Now, while those guys are marinating, doing their thing, I'm going to take a plate and set my vegetables off to the side. And then I'm going to take a couple of these eggs here. I hope the viewers can see that. Those tomatoes, the peppers, and the beans. A good little mixture there. All right. And I'm going to cook off a couple of these eggs, too. Now, the presentation on this chicken. Take my plate. This is all that dark meat. I hope the viewers can see that. You know, I know one thing, it smells wonderful. You can't, you can't beat that. Look at that. Mm. Moist, tender, juicy. 
You can't beat that. You can't get a better flavor. You know. Those eggs that I was telling you about, I'm gonna cook a couple of those. I'm just gonna scramble it. Salt, pepper, and a little bit of organic butter. And then I'm gonna just try to keep this thing simple so our viewers at home, because they keep this farm simple. All the things coming from the ground, keep it simple. And um, life is a lot easier like that. All right, when we come back, I have that egg scrambled. And we'll be tasting. Stay tuned. Here I go, I'm gonna, like I was saying, I was gonna scramble some eggs, keep it simple. Um, these eggs are brown eggs. You can't get any better than that, especially if they're, they're the best eggs for bacon. They make a cake rise real nice. Uh, little margarine going in it. And I'm gonna let Eric taste one of these eggs as well, if I. And these eggs are from the Red Star Hens, which is a which is in in a heritage breed, as I mentioned earlier. As you see there around here, they're scratching, they're digging in the dirt and in the weeds. They're getting those bugs and grubs and, and a lot of those grass blades that make these eggs taste the way they do. Yeah, look, look at that yolk. How golden that yolk is! I hope our viewers can get get a good shot of that. You can't get any better. This is so nice. A little salt. A little pepper. You mind giving me one of those plates right there? Sure. Look at that. Oh yes. That's how scrambled eggs should be. All right. There you go. Oh yeah. Is that more what you think? That's good eating. Awesome. This is the way I eat every morning. Must be because nice. I have them here. <laughs> but yeah. if you want these eggs, they are available. I sell them four dollars a dozen. You can simply just give me a call, 706-881-1249. And as far as the food as far as the vegetables, I market my vegetables in three different ways, of course. Early in the year, I sell my food through what's called a CSA, which, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, which is a prepaid subscription that runs from early May to the end of November. Or you can get them at markets where I'm available at selling, or you can get this stuff straight off the farm. All right. Well, that's our show for the day, and we'd like to thank our guest, Eric Simpson, inviting us to his farm and eating organic food, which more healthier for you. Thank you. Thank you.